Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Giorgio Veronesi. I'm president of the European Federation of Chemical Engineering. Uh, I've been in the board of EFC in various positions for eight years, and currently I'm in my second term as president. I'm a chemical engineer by training, graduated in Padua, Italy. I've been spending the whole of my career in the engineering construction business, involved in many projects, mainly abroad, with the several assignments overseas. I'm very happy to be in charge of the introduction of this webinar on static electricity, which is titled Protection of Electrostatic Charges and Discharges, Material Webs Charging and Lightning Protection. And I'm looking forward to participating to it. Let me say something about uh, the um, this webinar series. The EFC is organizing a series of virtual talks on significant topics in chemical engineering. And this is now our fifth year of this initiative, which started in 2020 to keep together the community during the COVID pandemic. The success of the previous years convinced the management, our EFC management, to transform the spotlight talks in a regular feature of our program. So this time, 10 of our working parties and section, thermodynamics, membrane, education, static electricity, drying, fluid separation, loss prevention, crystallization, process intensification, and chemical reaction engineering and food, are delivering over two weeks short sessions of three or four talks focused on specific topics by leading industrial and academic experts. This uh, series also enables attendees to follow matters in areas that they find interesting, but they've not attended before. And in this way, we want to encourage cross-fertilization between specialist, specialist areas. The links uh, to the next talks uh, are available when you register and for, for this event, and are also available through the EFC uh, website. EFC promotes scientific collaboration and supports the work of chemical engineers in 30 European countries, representing more than 100,000 of them in Europe. And the working parties and section of EFC cover all major aspects of chemical engineering and are in fact at the core of the organization, forming the scientific engine that drives many of EFC activities. They provide an important forum for technical exchange and networking among chemical engineers in Europe and uh, outside Europe. Before concluding, I would like to thank all the people who work hard inside the working parties and section and EFC in general for this initiative to happen and to be successful. In particular, I would like to, 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 to thank very much uh, Martin Pou in Toulouse, who did most of the conceptual setting up and practical activities this time and from the very beginning of the, of the series. I thank you for your attention and I, I wish all the speakers and the attendees a fruitful and successful webinar. I would then give back the uh, call uh, the chair of the Static Electricity Working Party, Pedro Llovera, to start the works. Pedro. Uh, thank you, George. I will share my screen. Let me check if everything is okay. Is it okay or not? Uh, no. I, I, I tested before. Here. No? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, uh, thank you, Georgia, for your introduction. It's, uh, it's an honor to have you with us today. So, it's my pleasure to introduce this Spotlight Talk, which is the fourth for our working party, but it's the sixth of the EFC Spotlight Talks. I am the chair of the working party static electricity industry. I've been working on electrostatics properties of materials, electrostatic diagnostics of industries, facilities, offices, etc. for more than 20 years. I'm a teacher at the Polytechnic University of Valencia, electrical engineer, and also a researcher at the Energy Technological Institute in Valencia. And I would like to thank EFCE for organizing this webinar and, of course, to Giorgio Veronesi for his presence. And um, again, me too, I, I joined the thanks to Martin Pou for his, her great effort in organizing the Spotlight Talks, which is not an easy task and I think it's <laughs> quite complicated to organize. Um, 
I would also want to thank the the institute in which I work with in the field of electrostatics and high voltage engineering. And of course, all of you for, for attending uh, this, uh, this webinar uh, from many countries worldwide. We're happy to see that it attracts attention to many people and we hope it will meet your expectations. One of the aims of this webinar for us is also to build a scientific and technical, let's say, electrostatic community. So I strongly encourage you to participate with your questions during the webinar. We will be very happy to answer as well technical or specific questions from specialized or even basic or fundamental questions for those who are starting in this field and that are very well welcome in, in the field. For organizational reasons, you are not allowed to speak, so you need to write the questions in the question and answers section. I will collect them uh, during the presentation. You don't have to wait until the end of the presentation. You can write at the moment you have the, the question you want to to have this this question, I will collect them. And at the end of each presentation, we will discuss it. And maybe if we have time at the end, we can again open uh, time for for the for questions at the end of the webinar. We will have two two very interesting talks on electrostatic industry electricity in industry today. Um, the first is a presentation by Mr. Wolfman Schubert. We'll focus on how charging happens on material webs how to measure it, how to correctly neutralize the chart. He's an expert in printing industry, but all the methods are applicable to any industry where material webs are, are handled. In the second talk, uh, Dr. Isvan Kiss will speak about a very large scale discharge and this case lightning protection of chemical industry. Lightning is a very extremely long discharge, electrostatic discharge, or not so electrostatic at the end, but which is completely out of our control. So the only approach for protection is, is to protect installation. We cannot avoid them. So uh, Professor Isvan will, will give a, a talk on, on the, the physics, the technical solutions, and how to reduce risk. Uh, he uh, has a very large experience in lightning protection. So I think he, he can, uh, enlightening us with this contribution. Um, this, as Giorgio told, is a, this webinar is a part of the AFC series. Here you have the whole list. If, if you have missed some of the of the already happened uh, spotlight talks, you can check them later on the AFC YouTube channel. Um, for us, it's our fourth in previous webinars. We spoke about risks, measurements, materials. ATEC zones. Uh, we also have a, a webinar, an incident review of electrostatic dust explosion, and also flexible intermediate bulk containers, comfort, smart materials. So a lot of topics associated with our with our field of expertise, which is very large. The working party uh, covers all these aspects. I won't spend me too long here, but uh, safety, damage to electronics, how uh, understanding the the electrostatic processes, but also applications such as precipitation, separators, extra springing, electro hydrodynamic. Now, recently high voltage during current, but also aerospace industry, biological application, etc. Um, we have, a, I will say some more about next events related to our field. The next event on the electrostatics is the um, annual meeting of the Electrostatic Society of America. And they asked me to, to say some words. We, we collaborate in the, both our common promotion. So uh, this year, the meeting will be in Ontario, in Ottawa, Canada. And there you have the information in June from 9 to 13 June. Um, uh, this year, the conference features tutorial sessions one day before the conference. Uh, as well, it provides attendees the opportunity to submit their work to a special issue of the Journal of, of Electrostatics. And also, next, our next event from the working party is the Electrostatics 2025 conference. Okay, it's not maybe too early, but um, okay, we're happy to announce that it will be held in Bologna in November 2025 organized by the University of Bologna by Dr. Ernesto Salzano. Um, uh, even if it's two in, in one year ahead of uh, the conference, um, we will open the call for abstracts by the middle of this year because uh, we have a long review process because all, all the papers are published 
uh, all the papers we gather now are published at the Journal of Electrostatics, so uh, you can, we, we need some time to review. And if uh, there's also an opportunity to present at the conference without publication at the Journal of Electrostatics, a kind of extended abstract. And then, okay, we will send information periodically and about all the dates for presenting papers at the Journal of Electrostatics and later only for, for the conference. Um, so, I, want, I will stop here. Just introducing our first speaker in detail, Wolfgang Schuber. He studied printing technology in Leipzig and he's, he's a trained printer. Uh, he went into business for himself in 1997 uh, after holding various management positions in the printing industry. Uh, he has also worked in the field of electrostatics, sales and marketing and training. One of the most important contributions is uh, the author of uh, the Lexicon of Electrostatic and co-author of the book, a very well-known book, Static Electricity. And he has been appointed in, 20, in 2016 by the Leipzig Chamber of Commerce and Industry as an expert in the field of printing processes, printing machines, printability, runability, and packaging printing. So he's very specialized on printing, but you will see that all the questions he will show us are applicable all to other fields. So now um, I will give the floor to Wolfgang. And he stopped sharing. So I should start. Now you, yeah, now you can share, yeah. Yes, please, yeah, Wolfgang, okay. you can start, OK. So, You see it? Yeah, but just sharing the, uh, uh, the yeah. presentation. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I will try it again. You have to choose the other screen, yeah. Yeah, I have to, 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 to uh, choose the right screen. Uh, this one. Now should be OK. Yes. OK. So now, um, so I I will start the, this presentation, and um, you should know I wrote this together with Atsushi Osawa from from Japan, and we have a lot of discussion about this this matter. Um, it was ich wie geht das hier weiter? Sorry. So, no, okay, uh, a little bit um, additional information about me. I'm the chairman of the Electro Static Foundation, uh, founded by Günther and Silva Lipkens, and uh, you know he, he died uh, two years ago, and uh, he gave me all his material to me, so I have a big uh, um, um, amount of, of books in my in my home now. <laughs> and <laughs> um, since uh, 2014, uh, I'm active in the standardization of electrostatics and member of the German TC uh, 111, that's the terminology um, uh, committee and I started the project uh, for maybe a special part uh, for terminology of electrostatics because I saw in the international uh, electropedia I found on very uh, different parts some things about electrostatics but uh, not uh, sometimes not so really one okay let's start with uh, um small video into the material web world and said what you see is an um, unwinding process of uh, siliconized paper at 20 meters per second and uh, you have or you see since the distance between the real and the metal uh, plate uh, that are 500 millimeters. That means 1,500,000 volts. I think it's very impressive uh, to see this uh, video. A second one is from a paper making machine. 
um, only with six meters per second. Also not so fast. And it's also very impressed to see the brush discharges and uh, the, the problems which you get uh, with this. So but, uh, let's take a look at the, the details of the charging mechanism by charge exchange and charge separation when the web is moved on a, on a grounded roller by contact and separation. I will start with the factors that uh, need to be considered prior to the generation of electrostatic. I use uh, the terms donor and acceptor to explain the source of all um, electrostatics. These terms were first used for explanation by Günter Lütgens in about uh, 1988. Yes, it's a common term uh, used in the semiconductor technology, but even there, it's only about the exchange for electrons. So we have uh, two. Um, First, uh, influencing factors that the material with the surface resistance of the top of the bottom and uh, the web tension and maybe slip increases the charge due to the increase in contact points due to the friction. Um, sometimes, or not so, not so seldom, we have a contact roller for, for driving so the web or other, from other. Uh, things what you need this and that is the area in which the um, e field um, is um, generated additional to this uh, separation things and uh, for for the view of the separating mechanism of material web, you have all these um, uh, known other factors around the material web. So what's happened at the separation line? We have the chain exchange in on the nanometer scale. Um, that's a detail to uh, understand this in, in, in this uh, area. It's the same for, for um, other solids, of course. Um, we have a charge backflow, the tunneling effect in, in the semiconductor, uh, like the semiconductor industry. We get a surface charge density. We have a surface reverse current. I show a picture. We have the charge separation and transport of charges and uh, an electric field with uh, surface charge density. And to confuse you all, I have summarized all the details in one slide. All the details must be taken into account if you want to explain or find solutions to reduce or eliminate electrostatic charging. I think it's a lot of things uh, additional to the other uh, factors around. One of the interesting things that, uh, at the separation line is the surface reverse current. This was first described in 1969 by Gabel and Schön from the PDB in Germany during the investigations of a paper web in uh, Rotocrever Press. You can see the blue line like a glow discharge at the separation line of uh, the semiconducting uh, rubber roll. This is a typical situation of a web pass in a gravel press. And this reverse current will not cause ignition in a print unit with toluene. You should think for the quenching distance because it's too small. Uh, this photo photograph was made possible because the material web was, web was uh, transparent and the web speed was about eight meters per second. At present, no studies have been carried out on the reverse current, so no data are available. But I plan to measure it in a web machine with 150 meters uh, in the next months. The next problem with the webs is the unstable situation at the edge of the, the roll. In this little video, you can see 
very clearly said this on, on, on this place uh, with, a, with a red circle. I make it again. You see, you have absolutely unstable uh, separation system. And uh, this situation applies more or less all separations on the on, uh, uh, web. The Fraunhofer IVV, the Institute for Process Engineering and Packaging in Dresden, has developed an optical web tension scanner to display a very different situation at the cutoff line of a roll. Here you can see the deflection of uh, plus minus uh, 20 millimeters. These very different separation conditions naturally cause very different charges. This scanner was uh, developed to determine uh, the quality of plastic films. So, so far we have talked about unwinding and separating. And uh, what's now happen when the web is rewound? Um, it's important to know that you don't need high speed uh, webs. I removed this uh, image from a video of a digital printing machine. Um, this machine was equipped with a, a Corona pretreatment system with an ionizer prior uh, inkjet printing, and the speed was only 40 meters per minute. This is slow. Due to the mechanical forces to accumulate single charges on the same polarity, we see a strong discharge. We call it super brush discharge, and this was this super brush discharge was first mentioned by Lipkins and, and Wilson in, in 1979. The so next is a super brush discharge, uh, also a detail from a video. Fields up to one megavolt per meters can be measured on such films. Besides great dangers for humans, there will be dam damages in the bearings. Uh, I found uh, the shown uh, bearing damages on a machine which was operated plastic film is 10 meters per second for several days without any ionizers. It was very impressive to see these uh, holes in the bearings. And now, how to eliminate it? A grounded copper garland? I don't think not really. And we have seen that the many influencing factors to do not allow the charging of the web to be predicted. And um, due to the short presentation, I cannot go into to detail about the placement of ionizers, but um, um, to understand the function of a discharge electrode, it's necessary to understand the requirements of E-field measurement because the operation of ionizers can be compared to the E-field measurement. The measured electrostatic field is always a, a vectorial sum of the electric fields from both sides that the EFM detects. You see the field lines to the EFM and with all um, things around. And you have to eliminate this uh, homogenize, homogenization plate. And I made in, on this um, um, Rogowski profile at the end of the plate. It would be good. And if you want to measuring exactly, you sh can use such uh, measurement set up. And one of the important things to understand uh, electrostatic charges and uh, measuring and uh, eliminate, you should think in field lines. So it's very important to imagine that what you uh, have the charged surface and where the field lines go to the next grounded place. To um, understand the ionizer, I added here an ionizer um, in opposite to, to, to the web. Okay, it's idealized uh, to, to see that you have no charge here, but um, at normal, if you reduce to, to only a few volts, it's okay. 
in many, uh, many cases, the measurement setup is chosen in which the e-field meter or another measurement device is placed directly in opposite the roll. With such an arrangement, measuring values can always be achieved for moving VECs. However, these values are generally not meaningful because the detection circle of the EFM extends well beyond the contact area of the web and all fields of the incoming and outgoing web are included in the displayed readings. Additionally, additionally when the charged web touches the grounded roller, the resulting field is only within the thickness of the material. Um, the E field uh, emanating from the web induces an image charge on the conductive roller, and therefore, true charge on a web can only be uh, measured as shown in the last chart with, with all the disadvantages of the measurement set up. That's uh, and uh, for for material webs, it's not important to know exactly plus minus one volt or. We will be good if we can say, okay, plus minus 100 and 500 volts. That's okay for material webs. For example, please imagine a film with an E-field on the top, for example, plus 14 kV and on the bottom mean minus 13 kV. The vectorial sum is only one kilowatt. If you place the ionizer on the top, he works similar to the EFM we have seen. Um, because the electrostatic attraction force of the produced ions lies only in the range of one kilowatt. Behind the ionizer, you will measure an E-field with null zero kilowatts, but the film is not discharges. You got at the end a bipolar layer. And I made this um, picture for, for my uh, electrostatic lexicon. And um, so you see the basic situation of such a bipolar layer. The column force is within the um, material. Huh? Um, the result is to put one ionizer at the top and one at the bottom, so you can be sure to eliminate most of the charges. The sum of uh, no, uh, zero kilovolt is uh, idealized, of course. So what kind of ionizer we have to do? Um, the objective used for the ionizers is adequate discharge for webs or moving sheets in the shortest possible time. Um, at normal, we have web machines with speed up to 33 meters per second or more, and sheet fed machines at the normal uh, printing machine with uh, 4.3 meters per second. So we have passive ionizer and we have active ionizer. Passive ionizer are only pins uh, um, connected to, to the ground, and active ionizer with um, power supply um, as DC ionizer with different methods of controlling the emission pins, voltage, frequency, and so on, and um, the AC ionizer. I prefer the AC ionizer, and I will show you why. If you measure a web with many small electrofield meters, you get a distribution like this. The distribution of plus and minus was a result of a fire investigation in the Gerber Press uh, many years ago. And if you only use a DC ionizer, um, you run the risk of leaving the, this charge because you do not have enough ions with the right polarity for this charge as you get with an AC ionizer. The same is true if you want to discharge small parts in the plastic industry. And uh, if you have an ionizer, you see you have a very good um, amount of plus and minus for discharge as a material web. The ideal placement of the ionizer is one of the big questions in the machines. 
um, experience and physics tell us that this uh, roughly is the best way to place ionizers. There are many details to consider as a result of electrofluid dynamics, but this matter electrofluid dynamics is uh, really another, another uh, thing um, to do or to, to speak about this. One of the biggest problems, however, is the use of active ionizers in processes involving composite materials with embedded conductive layers. And the active ionizers affect the charge in the conductive layer, which is usually has a high capacitance um, for uh, in, in the material. This is a this shows a possible structure of composite uh, material as used in the cosmetics industry. It seems like uh, it's aluminium, but it's not really aluminium. You have a paper on the top and uh, polyethylene and aluminium in the ceiling, copolymer on the back side. And um, it's not really only an aluminium material. The metallic or other conductive layers represent the high electrical capacitance into which charges can be injected by the corona pretreatment, one of the biggest problems, and, and or the use of active ionizers. However, one of the bricklayers problems in the converting industry is that all materials that cause dangerous discharges. And the right positioning of ionizers is important for a proper discharge in a web machine. A few years ago, I had to investigate a fire on a paper coating machine. I found that the coating on the paper was causing um, a tube acetate to ignite. The cause was an electrode form formation due to corona pretreatment. The paper, uh, paper web was not cooled, so the contents of the paper coating should cause dipole orientation due to the temperature and permittivities of titanium dioxide and calcium carbonate. The charged paper web charged an insulated installed metal pipe with 20 picofarads via influence, and therefore the use of ionizers in combination with the chill road could have prevented the fire. They did this and they have no, um, no um, um, incident, uh, accidents in, in, since many years. This picture shows a schematic coating machine with a requested placing according to the IEC standards. And um, I have made a new sketch um, for a wet machine that for, for better understanding. And one of the big problems in the um, yeah, engine, machine engineering um, if you see this picture, you say, okay, so it's a clever printing machine, but the same situation you have in another machine, for example, that is a, 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 a central cylinder uh, flexo printing machine, um, you all have every time such uh, materials in your hand, it's our labels and, and uh, sleeves on, on uh, your, your water bottle also, uh, or, or others. And the designer have to, to watch that he needs ionizers on this place. You see it here, it's, you have to, to um, adapt it, this situation to your situation in your special machine. And, um, at the end, um, the sketch from the NFPA 77, I have marked the ionizers in, in red and this correspondence approximately to the IEC, but uh, the ionizer on this place would be better placed on the backside at the separate, after the separation line um, of this, um, yeah, web pass. Yes, if you want to know more about the, uh, the elimination of electrostatics, you find further information in these books. The um, 
Praxislexikon statische Elektrizität uh, was uh, published in November 2022. And just I'm working on the English translation. It's a big project for me. Um, after more than 25 years in almost every industry, there would still be many examples to report. And uh, the Easter season is just around the corner, and chocolate is a high insulating material that stores charge well and coated with aluminium and can cause strong discharges to people. I had to experience it for myself. But the effects of uh, electrostatic discharge on humans would be another lecture. So many thanks for this short information about this. And I, I said um, the paper for this presentation will be published in the special issue of uh, Journal of Electrostatics, Electrostatic Hazards and Mitigations. So many thanks. So I'm ready. Thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you. Uh, this nice presentation. Just stick on time. You even be shorter than expected. So okay, we have time for discussion. But I haven't. I can't see any question on the question and answer section. If you don't know how to use it, maybe you can use the the chat of the of the webinar. Um, if not, while well, if people are thinking about the questions. Um, I, can, I can ask you some some question. Um, you, I, if I, if I have well understood you, you have you have have well understood you. Um, you spoke about some discharge, this blue discharge in the in the the back current. Yeah. Uh, that may not be especially dangerous or we have to av avoid all the discharge or can we color tolerate some discharge in the in the process you you mean you mean this reverse current yeah this reverse current is it dangerous or in general no, are there it's, some it's, no it's it's not not dangerous because um, you have to 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 watch for the or, or think about the, the um, term quenching distance the distance in which um, a bit between or the distance between the separation and, and the reverse current is too small that you get um, energy enough for ignition. Okay. Okay. I see now people writing. So Kelly Robinson, thank you for your fine presentation. Thank you, Kelly, for attending. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And thank yeah. you for your comment. And now there's another question, Amir Nesrin. Why we should think about the electric field lines when we want to eliminate a charge? Once again. Uh, why we should think about the electric field lines when we want to eliminate a charge? I think it's related to your... It, 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 yes, it, to, it's, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's, 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 yes, it's... Uh, the question, uh, think in field lines. If you have um, a charged surface, you should um, imagine where the field lines uh, going to. Um, field lines or, or the, the, the field from a, a charged material or a charged um, plastic um, product um goes the shortest way to the um to the um, um grounded material around this and so if you have um material or or your web and and you have a lot of of edges uh, or yeah edges in in your around the material web um if they are, they are in the most time not sharp enough to um, create the corona discharge. And um, so you can get, um, I showed you at last the, the, the printing, um, the 
the central cylinder uh, printing machine with a big cylinder and, and the web around with, with 10, um, with the 10 uh, printing units. And after the separation, the material web from this um, big cylinder, we had in, in fire, such a machine was, was uh, uh, burned down two times, two times, four million uh, damage. Four million euro uh, damage. It was a, it was a big problem, and um, we had on this material web a small piece of aluminium, um, which it, it was. You, everybody knows as um, wrapping material for butter. You know, as it's a paper and, and an aluminium around this. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, printed in this machine. And on this material web, you had um, a small part um, after going around this, um, this um, big cylinder. And we had um, this small part was charged due to the contact and separation. And we had, uh, you should imagine an, an aluminium part from such a, a very thin aluminium of, of a butter wrapping material in, in, in the size of an, um, yeah, a business card has round about 12 uh, uh, picofarads. And if you charge it on 7,000 volts, you get an uh, ignition ener energy that's enough for ignition uh, the yeah, uh, solvent vapors. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big problems of um, if you if you have to think uh, or, or to, to plan. Um, any things for discharging that's the same like uh, for measuring uh, electrostatic fields, you have to um, watch where you go your field lines on the next grounded uh, um, material part in the machine. I hope it, it's it's very difficult to 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 uh, um, explain, but I I think. Um, the, the pictures from from the um, if I can do it again. No, hold. Yeah, you, you maybe you mean that the the web can be charged, but in some points no electric field can be coming out of the yes. Of the web. For example, when it's when you, it's you, you, yeah. you know you know you have um. A maximum uh, surface charge density of 26 uh, microcolumns per uh, square meter. Mm -hmm. And and over this, you had the corona discharge at the end of, of a material. And um, but on, on plastic film, you can. Um, store a little bit more if you have conductive um, yeah. materials behind the, the, the basic for a propagating brush discharge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's there are, there are a lot of things which are going uh, together. Okay, okay. So, so uh, for Amir Nesrin, if, if you one more explanation, you can write an, another question. Um, I think Kelly Robinson has a question. Is there always a blue discharge with reverse current? Uh, Wolfgang? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I don't know, because um, it was, you, sh you should know, this picture was uh, made by a colleague of me, he's now 86 years old, and um, he took his uh, photo. Um, uh, and, and, and 
sit down in in the mm -hmm. night in a very closed uh, um, printing unit and could um, do this picture. And uh, he said after this uh, picture, he was very um, yeah, um, like like he has to, to very drunken due to the uh, toluol um, vapor <laughs> in this printing machine. Okay. There are no further investigations, and we will, uh, as I said, we will start uh, such investigation for measuring this current um, in the uh, next months with in, in, in a in a. Master thesis in it's a, a printing manufacturer uh, in, in 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 Würzburg. Mm -hmm. So we have such a, a yeah a laboratory machine to um, use 150 meters per minute uh, with a small uh, plastic film web, and we will um, add some measuring uh, things and. Um, we will we will uh, publish uh, this if we are ready with this master uh, thesis. Okay, uh, just to continue now, we have many questions. <laughs> uh, Kelly uh, comments a situation with conductive layer inside the metal foil, and he says that for material webs with a varied conductive layer, such as a metal foil, as you as you talk, yeah. I, I, he has also found a risk of static discharge when a splice passes by a roller. Have you also seen this? Uh, it's a, if you if you mean this is plies uh, um, um, elements that can be um, cause ignitions. That's right. Okay, so you also seen this situation. And, uh, if, if you if you have a real changing in the, in the web machine. Okay, that's, that's possible. That's possible. Okay. Okay. Now we have two more questions, uh, which are more or less related. Marcos Dominguez, uh, he asked, why are double ionizers better than only at one side? Because if we can only place one by economic reason, is, is it better below the roller or the best position must be studied in each case? Okay. Why um, two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, of course, this depends on your on your problems. If you have, you cannot. Uh, um, so you should um, watch the ionizer salesman. If the ionizer salesman want to sell uh, this <laughs> ionizing pass, so and he said you have to use it on every place after separation <laughs> from the roll. It makes no sense. Okay. And uh, you you should only place it on the um, places in in a, in a web machine on which you expect some risks for hazards uh, for igni ignition hazards. Only on these places you should do this. And uh, if you have, um, you should discharge at the start at the unwinding uh, uh, area, and you should. Uh, discharge at the rewinding on, mm -hmm. on the rewinding system and it's the best to do it if you have a film or an, an, a very uh, a not um, yeah not the thin paper at normal you have um, materials with with um, with coating and and uh, you should you should know um, if you have uh, materials which are processed in uh, or coated in, in any machines, um, mm. you know you have an, an, an a twenty euro banknote that's a uh, cotton paper, a cotton material, really natural cotton paper, and if you measure the surface then the surface uh, um, resistance you i think you found uh, find uh, 10 14 ohms 
it, it's very isolated material. That's the same. If you have a normal normal printing machine, you have paper and you print it four colors um, on, on one side and four colors on the back side, you have not more paper. You have a coated material with the behavior of a film. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big problems. And that's, that's what you have to understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, just you seem to say that uh, ionizers, the, the most critical processes are winding or unwinding. But rolling in your pictures you show, rolling is not so critical. Rolling over a roller, it's not so critical yeah, yeah, as yeah. winding or unwinding. But in a, in a case, you say, oh, uh, I think the uh, picture from a standard, you say, yeah. this place is not okay, it should be better on the back, um, to place the ionizer. Um, I, I mean, this is more or less the same question. Why do you remember in which which uh, slide I'm talking about? You, I think, if I have well understood that you you say one picture that the ionizer should be put on the back of the film instead of on yes. the top. Uh, what what's the the criteria for this? Just yeah. measuring or no? If then. if you want, if you uh, if discharge only one side. Yeah. Right? you um you should you should know I, I said if you go to to measuring in a web with an electrofield meter you're measuring the vectorial sum of the charge of both sides mm -hmm. that's important to understand so but an ionizer um emits um ions from the pins on, of the ionizer and he, he gives plus and minus ions in, in, in the air, and the charged surface take what they need. Yes? Okay. But it takes only one side. You cannot discharge the back side. And so you, that's the experience. Um, to, to use two ionizers on, on the backside. And I, I saw machines where you have uh, um, ionizers only on one side, and, and then they asked me, okay, you should help, uh, we, have, we have a lot of problems. Yeah, okay, I said, put another uh, ionizer on the backside and you have no problems more. Um, that's the result, and you have to, um, discharge especially films on both sides okay another thing is if you have such composite materials with embedded aluminium or ito or, or whatever uh, you have uh, in, in such materials yeah i had um a customer as i was a salesman some years ago no many years ago um they coated a thin film with uh, intium tin oxide um, layer and they used active ionizers. And they said, okay, every time we have some, some pinholes or, or uh, some, some mistakes in our um, or, or faults in, in our coating surface, it's not, not more hom homogeneous. And so I said, okay, switch off your ionizer, your active ionizer. So you had an ionizer um, where the, the pins was connected with a resistor. Uh, and if you have such ionizer, you can switch off these ionizers um, and uh, um, pass is open to the ground to uh, use it as passive ionizers. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yes, that's difficult. And I, I said I, I, I describe this in, in in this paper in in the uh, for the for the um, journal of electrostatics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, uh, Wolfgang. Just one last 
question. I think there's another one. Yeah. Okay. Mm. There's a comment from Kelly and a question from Tammy Zeglul. Um, I will leave the question for Tammy by the end, to the end, because it's, it's, it comes as a summary. Uh, the comment of Kelly is, uh, I think that uh, an ionizer responds just like a field meter because the electric field pulls ions to the web surface. So an ionizer also responds to the charges on both sides of the web. Is, is it correct? No, this summary is correct. No? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we have not too much time. So the last question from Tammy Zeglu, and it's, it's okay because it's, it starts by finally, <laughs> finally, as a summary, what do you think is the most effective way to evacuate or at least neutralize uh, ESD, electrostatic discharges? It depends <laughs> on, on the special <laughs> situation in it your depends. machine. You have, you have such a big, um, amount of tools to, to discharge. Yes, you have passive discharge. Um, you have active discharge. Um, what I said, um, I don't, uh, I, I say you, you cannot use um, ionizers with um, the DC ionizers, which are very common in, in, in the industry. And the DC ionizers are equipped with an um, high source uh, um, cascade in, inside the, uh, the bar, inside the ionizer. And see if you, um, I wrote um, two years ago in, in the Journal of Electrostatics in, in, in a paper for um measuring the peaks of which coming from the in, in material web. I said you have a very different uh, situation after the separation line. And uh, I measured peaks uh, within 0 0.09 seconds of 20,000 volts. And um, I have a Another um, investigation um, supported with a um, uh, master thesis, they had more than 100 kilovolts mm -hmm. within very short times. And if such, an, such an, uh, big, uh, a big bang comes to such an um, ionizer with a built-in um, uh, HV uh, source, they will be damaged. Mm -hmm. You you cannot you cannot uh, make it safe, because that's the reason for for um, my opinion that AC is the best way. So AC after unwinding before winding on both sides and slightly shifted one to another. Yeah. That's that's a general rule. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Tami Figlu say that he's he's. Uh, your answer reassures me about my knowledge of ESD, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. I think we have to finish now this this uh, question section. So thank you to Tammy Theglur, Kelly Robinson, Marcos Dominguez, uh, Amir Nesrin for the question, and, and of course, thank you Wolfram for for your yeah. very interesting and nice nice presentation. So thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Now we will move but, to uh, Pedro. To one, yeah. one, one information: if somebody has a question. Uh, he can uh, look at my my website and send me an email and okay I, yes? I will show you i will show the your email and the isman email key email yeah. at the end of the, of the presentation too okay right? okay and if, if there's another question maybe at the end we can we can have some minutes yeah. so now now we are moving to the next uh, presenter i will share my screen again let me make it quickly okay Uh, next presenter is uh, Dr. Ethan Keys. He will speak about lightning protection of chemical industry. I think this is a very uh, important topic. With uh, I think he will show us some incidents. So not, uh, I mean, there's a standard, and 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 uh, we need to protect it. 
He um, is a doctor, is uh, she's the secretary of the working party, static electricity industry. He uh, graduated in 1925 as an electrical engineer. And he was uh, the, he has been the, the head of the department of uh, the electric power engineering in many years. He has, he has, he had his PhD degree in 2025, in 2005, and he became doctor habilitated in 2020. Um, he is a member of the House of the ICAP Scientific Committees of the International Conference of Lending Protection, International Fellow and Member of the Board of Directors of International Society of Electrostatic Precipitation, Chairman of International Conference on High Voltage Engineering, Member of SIGRE, IEEE, Electrotechnical Committee of the Hungarian Academy of Science. Hungarian Electrotechnical Association, Hungarian Academy of Engineering, and several further international scientific societies that will not say on the whole list. So he brings together electrostatics, lightning protection, high voltage, and, and a lot of uh, applied experience. So, um, Isvan, thank you for your presentation, and I will give you the floor now. Start, stop sharing here. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Pedro, for the uh, introduction or, or the introducing me. I try to select the appropriate window for the <laughs> sharing of my screen. Uh, uh, so I just uh, select the share screen option. And uh, now I try to select the PowerPoint uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Good. presentation. I think, uh, I think I it's hope okay. that uh, you can uh, see. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for the possibility to <clears throat> uh, join to this uh, uh, webinar. And um, uh, so, it's my uh, honor to, to uh, give a short overview about a very huge topic, the uh, lightning protection in the chemical uh, industry. Uh, <clears throat> um, as an introduction, uh, <clears throat> uh, perhaps uh, we can uh, start uh, with uh, that fact that, as you mentioned, that there is an international standard about the uh, protection against lightning. And uh, in the following presentation, um, I try to briefly discuss how can uh, it be applied for the structures in chemical industry. And uh, due to the limited time, only a short overview will be given about the standard. And uh, uh, we try to concentrate uh, on the uh, specific topics. And uh, as you mentioned, there are some examples. Why is it important to follow the standard and what kind of incidents can happen uh, when we do not do that? Uh, and uh, in addition to, I would say some words about the so-called preventive lightning protection uh, as a possible to, uh, to increase the safety. So um, <clears throat> although in case of chemical plants, the answer is obvious, but according to the standard procedure, the first question is that, uh, <clears throat> do we need the protection against the lightning or not? Uh, to answer the question, uh, the second part of the standard can be used, uh, which determines the risk of four different losses, the human life, the service to public, uh, cultural heritage, and the uh, uh, loss of uh, economic uh, value. It's no doubt that uh, at least L1 and L4 are very significant loss in case of the uh, chemical industry, so the risk can be very high of this uh, component. <clears throat> so we have to determine what kind of damages uh, are resulting in these losses. Uh, and these damages are connected, uh, are, are in connection with different sources, the flash to a structure, the flash near a structure, the flash to a line. You will see that it's very important, even in case of uh, chemical uh, plants, and uh, flashes near the uh, uh, forced lines. So uh, in each risk component, each risk value has different components that can be calculated by the product of the number of even, events. Uh, this number of events are caused by the lightning uh, strikes. Uh, and uh, the probability that uh, damage due to an event uh, uh, will uh, happen 
Uh, and there is a weighting factor, a loss value, which can be a relative uh, value, which is related to a reference, or it can be a cost of the loss. So it can be euro or, or uh, USD or, or any other uh, currency. Uh, so it means that the risk will be an average annual loss, uh, <clears throat> which can be taken into consideration. Uh, finally, the final risk values must be under a tolerable risk uh, level. Uh, and uh, for the last uh, component, uh, <clears throat> it is necessary to make a calculation whether the residual cost of the loss, in that case, when we apply a protective measure, uh, and the cost of the protective measure together is higher or lower than the loss without the protection. Because if the sum of the aforesaid two the costs are higher than the loss without the protection, in this case, the protection is not cost effective, uh, otherwise it is. Uh, it is obvious that it, in case of the chemical plants, the tolerable risk cannot be obtained without protection. Uh, external and internal lightning protection is needed or are needed uh, because uh, there is a high risk uh, uh, components uh, related to ordinary structures. Uh, there are often explosive environment uh, in the chemical plants and uh, the cost of the loss is uh, also very high. So it means that we have to reduce the risk. Uh, in addition to in the standard, there is an annex which is uh, dealing with the uh, <clears throat> structures with a risk of explosion. Uh, so it uh, contains additional information for structures called containing solid explosive material, uh, hazardous areas, uh, and uh, among them there are specific applications like filling station, storage tank, and piping network, uh, which uh, is involved in the <clears throat> uh, standard. So let's start with the external or primary lightning protection. Uh, the current uh, scientifically accepted way uh, of the lightning protection that we are providing an attachment point for the lightning and uh, uh, conduct the current to the uh, earthing, which can disperse the current into the ground without damaging the object to be protected. Uh, so this is uh, uh, about which the international standard uh, IEC 62305-3 uh, is about. Uh, it is interesting that Franklin's origin, uh, original idea was that the charge is neutralized by the corona discharge at the top of the uh, <coughs> um, 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 air term or, or, or the electrode, the corona electrode. Uh, but uh, uh, it is proven that that is a false uh, um, idea, and although it is interesting that although the explanation is false, but the system what he made is working like this way. Uh, in the international standard, uh, any other fancy solutions like dissipation arrays or early streamer emission air terminals, they are not involved. So uh, <clears throat> we are focusing on the uh, classic and how to say scientifically accepted um, systems. Let's start with the air termination. Uh, perhaps uh, a lot of you knows that uh, the lightning discharge is developing by a, a downward leader first. And when the downward leader reach the so-called striking point, there are connecting leaders starting from the objects on the ground. And finally, uh, one or more of these uh, connecting leaders can reach the uh, downward leader and the uh, lightning channel is uh, formed in uh, this uh, way. So practically the goal of the air termination to ensure uh, the, the attachment point for the lightning, but the appropriate uh, with the appropriate uh, positioning of the uh, air termination. Uh, but before uh, we dealing with that, I have to mention that there are some cases when uh, natural components uh, can be used as uh, air termination uh, <clears throat> and uh, also conducting the uh, current down to the uh, ground. But 
Uh, in this case, uh, such metal objects are necessary, which has a uh, wide enough thickness to avoid the uh, <clears throat> different uh, uh, negative consequences. Because if uh, lightning hits a metal plate, uh, <clears throat> it uh, heats up the uh, <clears throat> plate. And the question is that uh, the inside space, so if inside the space, so if, for example, in case of a tank, the inside of a tank, the temperature will reach uh, the uh, <clears throat> ignition point or not. Or uh, in worst case, it, it, it can melt it, so uh, there can be a melting through uh, due to the uh, lightning. So if you see uh, some uh, calculations and illustrations, there can be problem if you reach the ignition temperature uh, inside the tank due uh, to an internal hotspot, uh, or uh, <clears throat> if there is a melting through, uh, perhaps it's even worse because uh, the uh, <clears throat> atmosphere from inside can uh, go out and uh, can reach the hot channel of the uh, lightning uh, strike. So there can be a very serious consequence. Uh, also, metal droplets can uh, <clears throat> can be spread uh, by the uh, lightning, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, <clears throat> a typical uh, hole uh, can be produced by the lightning strike. Uh, and also, <clears throat> if you want to use your your uh, tank as an air termination uh, and uh, down conductor. Uh, uh, you have to care about uh, the uh, material, and uh, these are the minimum thickness. Uh, typically, the copper and the aluminums are uh, uh, given, and only the steel and also steels. So it means that uh, you uh, have to have at least uh, uh, such uh, thickness uh, if you want to use uh, your uh, metal uh, components uh, as uh, uh, air uh, termination. And if you use uh, uh, mm, uh, rods or air termination wires, uh, you have to select the diameter of the wires and the rods in such a way uh, that you have to avoid the melting of uh, these components due to the lightning strike. Uh, here you can see how much uh, charge is necessary to melt uh, the, the uh, wires with the different diameters uh, <clears throat> due to the uh, lightning strike, or uh, <clears throat> uh, there is another uh, diagram uh, which uh, is depending on the conducted current, how much speci specific energy is necessary for the melting of the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, certain uh, wire. Based on these, the uh, standard uh, selects uh, uh, appropriate diameters for the for the uh, 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 down uh, conductors, and if you uh, are don't, if you don't have uh, um, appropriate uh, metal for for uh, using uh, them uh, as uh, air termination system or down conductors, you have to install the uh, air termination system. For example, uh, the Franklin rods. Or uh, the standard prefers, in case of hazardous zone, this solution, where you have separated uh, <clears throat> uh, air terminal system. Uh, and in this case, the conduction is the current is uh, at least one meter away from the hazardous area. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, in this case, also the uh, point of strike is uh, <clears throat> removed from the vicinity of the, of the uh, tank. It is also important that if you have floating roof tanks, uh, in this case, you have to connect the floating roof with flexible conductors, uh, uh, at least 35 millimeters width and uh, uh, three millimeters uh, thickness uh, <clears throat> uh, to ensure that uh, the, the uh, roof is uh, uh, really uh, <clears throat> equipotential with the uh, tank. Uh, Positioning the air termination system, there are three different methods, the uh, <clears throat> protection angle method, the, the mesh method, and the rolling sphere method. Uh, <clears throat> um, the mesh method are mainly used in case of flat roofs. Uh, 
when a mesh of uh, air termination conductor are placed on the roof. Uh, here you can see the typical sizes uh, <coughs> uh, for the dimensioning. Uh, uh, and um, I must tell you that um, uh, in case of uh, such a complex uh, uh, <coughs> arrangement like a, a <coughs> chemical plant, I, I suppose to use the rolling spear uh, method. It is uh, available for complex uh, geometry. And nowadays you will see that there are a lot of computer programs which are able to do uh, uh, the calculation whether uh, <coughs> the, the uh, air termination system is appropriate or not. Uh, the method means <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> there are um, <clears throat> there is uh, uh, the radius. Uh, you could see here the radius of the rolling sphere, and a sphere with this radius, if it's rolling around an arrangement, uh, touching to the air termination system and the ground, or uh, uh, only to the air termination, uh, this uh, uh, <clears throat> sphere must not intersect into the object to be protected. So in this case, the uh, <clears throat> air termination is appropriate. Uh, you can see this blue uh, volume. It is considered to be the uh, <clears throat> uh, protected volume. Nowadays, there are programs which can create uh, cross sections about uh, the that uh, area what I uh, showed before, so which is under the uh, rolling spheres. Uh, here you see the three-dimensional uh, uh, picture, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, protection uh, is appropriate if there is no uh, uh, object uh, <clears throat> uh, crossing this uh, enveloping curve. Uh, with the down conductors, uh, <clears throat> uh, the standard distributes them uh, uh, around the perimeter of the structure. Uh, you, here you can see the uh, <clears throat> spacing for the different uh, classes of lightning protection. And it's important to avoid the loops and uh, keep the separation distance, distance to avoid uh, <clears throat> uh, discharges. Equipotential bonding is very important to distribute the lightning current, uh, mainly the direct bonding. But uh, <clears throat> there is uh, uh, also uh, uh, bonding via surge protective devices or uh, bonding via isolation spider gap. For example, in cathodic protection, the gas pipes inside a building uh, must be uh, uh, connected to the uh, equipotential <clears throat> system, but the other, but the gas pipe arriving from the system uh, is connected to the cathodic protection. So there is a uh, uh, isolating spar gap, uh, <clears throat> uh, which separates uh, them in normal condition, but uh, gives a bonding in case of a lightning strike. Here you can understand why is it important. If you use the tank uh, <clears throat> as an uh, air termination and uh, down conductor, uh, due to the earthing uh, resistance, there will be a <clears throat> a, a potential increasement of the, um, of the uh, tank. And if you have an insulating ring here and the metal pipe arrives here, uh, <clears throat> there can be a discharge. There uh, were uh, several accidents uh, due to that. So that's why bonding is important to equalize the potentials. Uh, but of course, uh, there are situations when you cannot uh, do uh, this kind of uh, equalization, for example, in case of a, a sensor. But in this case, uh, the uh, discharge can happen inside the uh, tank. So you have to apply surge protective devices uh, to avoid that. And of course, the arrangement must be uh, X proof. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, always advised by the standard to use uh, the surge protective devices uh, out of the uh, hazardous area, uh, so not inside. Uh, <clears throat> about the down conductors, you have to avoid the uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> too close uh, <clears throat> uh, appearance of uh, uh, conductive elements, because in this case, you can create a loop in which uh, uh, sparks can uh, happen. So you have to keep the separation distance, or uh, you have to apply uh, insulating lightning protection system. Uh, and uh, there is a good uh, uh, way 
uh, to decrease the risk of the uh, <coughs> uh, spark uh, to distribute uh, the uh, current in a different uh, uh, or between different groundings to decrease uh, its uh, uh, <coughs> effect. Uh, if you have uh, <clears throat> metal parts inside of the building, uh, if they are shorter than one meter, you have to connect them together. Uh, if uh, the distance is uh, <clears throat> higher than one meter, you have to connect the upper and the lower parts. The other connections are depending on the protection level. If the protection level is, for example, class one, in this case, you have to uh, connect all the other uh, metal components. Uh, chimneys are always important to uh, have uh, uh, an own, how to say, uh, air termination uh, road or air terminal component, or if it's a metal uh, chimney or, or a metal insert uh, in the chimney, uh, uh, you have to connect it to the down conductor, otherwise there can be a uh, uh, discharge inside uh, the building uh, if this uh, connection is not uh, made. Uh, the grounding uh, is uh, <clears throat> uh, suggested in case of uh, uh, <clears throat> this uh, um, um, structures with a risk of explosion to have a B-type ring electrode uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, or, or, or um, an electrode mesh uh, to connect uh, together the uh, different objects or the uh, concrete, the reinforced concrete, uh, <clears throat> can be used as uh, grounding in case uh, of the uh, buildings. A very important is the uh, internal lightning protection uh, due to conductive coupling. <clears throat> uh, when the lightning current rises, the potential, and uh, it, this can uh, cause a breakdown in equipment and uh, conduct over voltage to other uh, objects. Uh, the inductive coupling, when the uh, changing lightning current induces a magnetic field and the magnetic field induces over voltage in loops, creating uh, breakdowns, and the capacitive coupling, when there is a, a potential distribution between the lightning channel and the uh, ground potential. Uh, so these are the main uh, 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 three coupling forms. To avoid them, uh, the so-called uh, a uh, zonal concept uh, is used, uh, and also in the chemical plants it is uh, applied. Uh, uh, you have the zone uh, which is uh, protected by the rolling sphere, LPZ0B. Uh, in LPZ0E, the lightning appears uh, without any limitation. And at the entrance of the uh, building, uh, there must be uh, <clears throat> a surge protective device applied. These are lightning current conductors and there are uh, uh, surge protective devices, voltage limiting devices uh, between the second and the first zone. These uh, boundary of the zones means uh, shielding as well. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, system must be coordinated because if the uh, over voltage comes, the uh, component, which is usually a suppressor diet, will start to, uh, uh, due to the uh, um, due to the uh, over voltage. Uh, then it starts to car uh, conduct the current. It keeps its voltage uh, uh, constant, uh, and uh, 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 in this uh, uh, case, the, when we reach the operation voltage of uh, uh, the uh, of the uh, <coughs> varistor. Uh, in this case, <coughs> the, the varistor starts to operate, and uh, uh, <coughs> it uh, keeps the voltage almost a constant value, and more and more current will be conducted by them. And finally, the uh, lightning current conductor, the spark gap, will uh, uh, operate and uh, will conduct the uh, <coughs> current. It is very important to coordinate these uh, equipments because if we do not use internal uh, impedance and the uh, distance is short between the equipments, uh, we may overload the uh, <coughs> voltage limiting device and uh, in this case the protection will not work. 
So here you can see some parameters and uh, some uh, important uh, or some examples how they are used. Mainly the lightning uh, uh, conductors are used in the main uh, distribution boards and the voltage limitings uh, in the sub distribution boards. Uh, of course, uh, it is important that uh, they will protect uh, the uh, equipments uh, also in that case when the lightning strike will hit the uh, <clears throat> the um, system, the lightning protection uh, system, the air termination. Uh, <clears throat> also in TT system, uh, it can be applied, but in this case, there is a spark gap, which separates the grounding uh, uh, from the uh, common uh, point. Only in case of lightning uh, strike, it will uh, uh, operate it. Um, and here you can see a big um, <clears throat> arrangement, usually in case of chemical plants, there are a huge electrical network. Uh, uh, even in the medium uh, side, there is a protection before the uh, medium voltage, low voltage transformer. Uh, uh, but sometimes the lightning strike has such a high current that the, uh, uh, that the protective device cannot withstand the stress. And in this case, uh, it can unfortunately uh, explode. There are other uh, uh, things uh, detailed in the standard, how to uh, connect devices. Usually in case of buildings, the so-called tray system is uh, used, uh, which means that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, you have a star-like or a VI-connected system from the main uh, distribution board to the sub-distribution boards, and uh, interconnections are made uh, on the levels. And you have to avoid to make uh, uh, loops uh, uh, in the structure. These are very important uh, 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 from the safety. And thank you very much for, uh, for Simon Egan to have uh, uh, examples uh, about four, uh, four incidents. The first is from an oil uh, refining, then an aluminum smelting uh, uh, <clears throat> process, and then a uh, uh, production of uh, chlorine by electrolysis and production of ethanol from sugar. From sugar, uh, the first in the oil, uh, uh, first incident happened in an oil, oil refinery in France. Uh, there is a, a tank, uh, a one thousand cubic meter stock tank for water contaminated with hydrocarbons, and the direct lightning strike uh, was hit the roof of the tank near the outlands of the Brother lines. And uh, as, a uh, as a consequence, uh, explosion uh, happened, which was followed by fire. So it is important uh, as an additional, uh, how to say, uh, uh, point of view that uh, you have to uh, be careful with the outlets uh, of brother lines because, because these, uh, if they are protected by metal grid, they not are uh, not can be handled as flame arrestors. So if the lightning as a source appears uh, uh, in, in this case, the explosion can happen. Uh, in aluminum smelting, uh, <clears throat> the uh, incident happened in an oven containing uh, molten aluminum uh, metal. The direct lightning strike was hitting the power line and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, because of that, the main uh, uh, electricity was disconnected. And uh, uh, <clears throat> also the uh, emergency uh, electricity was uh, uh, disconnected. And uh, uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so the electricity restores after 10 minutes, so no damage uh, command, but the loss of uh, electricity for uh, <clears throat> Uh, 45 minutes or more would have allowed the aluminum to solidify, leading to a two-month shutdown. So it uh, it is um, you can see why it is very important to protect uh, not only the structure itself but the uh, <coughs> network which is connecting to the structure uh, <coughs> uh, also. And um, here you can see some other incident uh, which was uh, um, happened in Germany. Uh, also, the overhead power line was uh, hit by the lightning, and uh, the main electricity supply uh, uh, was cut. Uh, so, a formation of uh, uh, hydrogen chloride mixture uh, uh, was uh, 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 um, happened, 
uh, and as a consequence, an explosion uh, <clears throat> uh, took place uh, there. And um, the release of uh, 500 uh, kilogram chlorine uh, <clears throat> uh, was uh, the uh, consequence of that. Uh, and it was interesting that the backups uh, worked in a previous incident two days before, but in this incident, the backup uh, system was not working, uh, which uh, made the incident more serious. And also there was a, a, a problem in the, uh, in the production of ethanol from sugar in France. It is also a, a storage, storage tank and the direct lightning strike on the roof of the tank and uh, explosion uh, followed, followed, uh, followed by a, a fire what happened. And uh, this is a very important comment that lightning conductors were not correctly grounded. Uh, the periodical uh, maintenance and monitoring of the lightning protection system is very important to avoid such kind of uh, uh, accidents. Uh, <clears throat> so we have to keep the lightning protection in very good condition. Uh, and uh, who, excuse me for the uh, exceeding the time, uh, just short some words about the preventive lightning protection. If we have, um, uh, for example, a site when a dangerous process is uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, happening, what we can stop in case of emergency, uh, we can uh, detect uh, <clears throat> uh, the thunderstorm and we can avoid uh, to have lightning strike in the danger zone if we use the lightning detection network. So when the lightning is uh, approaching, I mean, the thunderstorm is approaching, in this case, we can give a warning signal when a lightning strike reach the warning zone. And we have enough time to stop the critical process until the uh, uh, thunderstorm reach or the lightning strikes reach the danger zone. So in this case, we can reduce the uh, risk. Uh, uh, the problem can be if the thunderstorm develops uh, uh, directly above the danger zone, because in this case we can do not use the uh, detection network. But in this case, if we can use uh, local detectors like uh, field mills, in this case we can sense the uh, <clears throat> formation of the thunder cloud, and in this case we can uh, <clears throat> uh, switch off the or, or, or we can we can um, stop the critical uh, process. So uh, thank you uh, for your kind attention and. Uh, I uh, try to be short and, and uh, remove several slides from the presentation, but uh, it was moderately successful. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Isan, for this very, very, very interesting presentation. It's not only your fault. I think we have accumulated <laughs> delay also because of my first presentation, so don't worry. Uh, we have time for, let's say, five minute discussion. There's one question from Kelly Robinson. Um, he says, for protective conductors that carry lightning current to ground, I understand that they must not melt. During a lightning strike, is air next to the conductor ionized? Is some of the lightning current carried in ionized air? Uh, <clears throat> it is interesting because um, the uh, during a lightning strike, uh, the ionized zone is near the lightning uh, channel down the winter. Uh, uh, so it means that uh, uh, in, if uh, the lightning reach the, the, the down conductor, the question is how much is the potential rise due to this uh, secondary effect? Uh, if the potential rise is uh, uh, high, in this case, the potential uh, can reach that um, how to say volume when uh, not only ionizing, but even a spark, even a breakdown can happen. But if uh, you create the um, down conductor arrangement uh, correctly, uh, you keep the separation distance or uh, you use uh, insulated lightning protection zone so you uh, avoid, avoid uh, this, uh, this um, uh, effect. So, uh, <clears throat> Um, so, uh, so that is the 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 situation with the with the uh, conductor. conductor. Okay, because the 
I mean, we, we had in a laboratory a, a typical situation. There was a, a dark conductor from a lightning road, and it was very close to a, a zone with gas bottles. Everything was grounded. But then we asked ourselves if we should um, worry about this, if because if the potential of the down conductor can be as high as to induce a spark to the gas bottle, should we uh, connect with a with a spark uh, mm -hmm. restor or um, this kind of situation? That that's why um, perhaps I can uh, switch back the uh, <clears throat> how to say. Uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation because that's why the calculation of the separation distance which is involved uh, oh, okay. in the standard is important because you can decide whether you need to connect the uh, metal objects with the down conductor or it's not necessary. Uh, okay, it is okay. depending on whether the separation distance is uh, higher or lower than the actual distance of the metal objects oh, okay. inside the building. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Not by the moment, so I will take advantage of my position for another question. <laughs> uh, you spoke about using, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, the um, reinforced concrete mm -hmm. as a part of the lightning protection system, or at least as a good potential. Is it not too risky? Uh, you, uh, are you sure it's yeah. always well bonded? And <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that is an important question. Um, in the slide, you could see that there was different layers of this uh, of this uh, structure, and the reinforced concrete, which which is the lower, or, or how to say, which is the how to say the surface of the uh, lower part of the building, uh, they are separated by an insulating layer from the from the uh, water uh, of the soil, and there is another layer, another uh, concrete layer uh, uh, below that which is connecting directly to the soil. And in that layer, you, you must have the uh, metal components inside the uh, concrete. So it means that the metal components must be connected with the moisture of the, of the, of the uh, soil. Uh, and then uh, the uh, conductors uh, which are connected to these uh, metal parts will cross the uh, insulating layer and then the uh, concrete comes. So it means that the uh, appropriate uh, uh, formation or the appropriate construction of the of the uh, reinforced concrete is very important uh, because, yeah. uh, for example, if you use the the uh, insulation layer and you don't cross this uh, insulation layer and you don't have connection with the uh, metal parts in the soil. In this case, you 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 will not have. Uh, okay, so it's not it's not side. so e so not so easy. Yes. Okay, th there's a question from Jean Luc Revel. He's speaking more about mo mobile <laughs> problems. Is mm -hmm. there a risk of lightning on road tankers or and rail tankers containing hazardous chemicals? If yes, how do we prevent it? <laughs> lightning <laughs> protection of vehicles. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is. Uh, a very important question because the uh, uh, how to say we always say that uh, no problem if you if you have a, a metal uh, uh, chassis uh, on a car um, in this case it will con conduct the car and the, uh, of the lightning without uh, any problem so you are in safe in the in the in the uh, car but the situation is uh, similar that if um, you have uh, such kind of a tank which has uh, uh, um, wide enough, uh, wide enough uh, uh, thickness. In this case, it behaves like a Faraday cage. You don't, you don't, you don't have to be a, uh, afraid of uh, uh, this. But if the situation is not that, um, for example, the the uh, lightning can can, can uh, create a, a melting in the in the in the uh, tanker. Uh, in this mm -hmm. case, uh, uh, there can be a danger of 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 uh, of um, um, how to say um, fire or or, or uh, explosion. But you have to consider uh, the risk, and then that's why the risk calculator uh, calculation is important. That uh, which uh, so how how uh, what is the probability that uh, such kind of a, a, a lightning strike 
uh, will uh, have the uh, the tanker. Uh, but uh, yes, this is a this is a, 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 the, a good question. The answer is uh, to ensure appropriate uh, uh, thickness metal parts uh, for the lightning as as uh, as um, uh, air termination, and then uh, you can uh, connect it to the to the uh, metal parts of the car, and it will it will <coughs> uh, conduct the current. Okay. Uh, hmm. There are no standards for vehicles, I think. So no, yes. <laughs> no. Um, okay. There's another question from Kelly uh, relative to the question of reinforced concrete. What is a good ground connection? Mm -hmm. Perhaps the soil and bedrock below the chemical plant is not sufficient mm -hmm. to safely carry the lightning current. Uh, it is also it is again a very important question because. Uh, whether uh, a good connection or not, uh, it must be de determined by measurement. So it means that uh, uh, if you are planning the uh, uh, the grounding, you can make the calculation depending on the uh, specific resistance of the soil. Uh, what will be the expected uh, uh, grounding resistance? And if uh, it exceed uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> volume which is given to the uh, level of the uh, uh, protection. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, you have to uh, rearrange or, or, or redesign the, the grounding uh, uh, system. So it means that you have to check the the uh, um, <clears throat> the um, volume of the. Uh, grounding resistance, and uh, you have to check it periodically uh, <clears throat> to ensure that uh, the grounding is grounding is uh, sufficient. Uh, in case of a rocky soil, uh, there is another, uh, how to say, uh, concept that uh, you want to uh, keep your arrangement uh, equipotential, and if the grounding resistance is very high. In this case, there will be, of course, a potential increase in your in your um, uh, structure. But everything is increasing its potential together, so uh, there will be no potential difference. But uh, uh, but it's uh, how to say not <laughs> so. In 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 case of an explosive uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, it's 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 uh, better to have a, a good. Uh, uh, or, or, or find such such a place when where there is uh, appropriate uh, uh, grounding uh, possible to to construct. Thank you. I think there are no more questions. Um, no. So we are a little late. So maybe we can close now the the webinar. Thank you to all of you, to the speakers, to Isvan and Wolfgang for the, the effort. You have the, the emails and contact information there. There's also my contact information for any question related to the working party static electricity in industry with our new logo on the left. <laughs> and thank you again to Martin for, for organizing the webinar. And uh, thank you all the attendants, of course, for listening and for active participating. Thank you, Kelly, Jean-Luc, in this last uh, question session. And um, I remind you uh, the all the Spotlight Talks before closing, if you want to register for any of them or to check them on the YouTube channel. Thank you, all of, of you. And now the, the webinar is finished. Thank you. Thank you.